I'm joined by Mark Yankovic, CEO and founder of Delphis Eco. Thank you very much for joining me, Mark. It's a pleasure. Thank you for uh, inviting me uh, onto your podcast and show. It's, um, I'm looking forward to having a, a great discussion. Oh, me too. And where are you taking this call from? Got a nice bright blue wall behind you. Uh, we are in our uh, relatively new offices in Bankside. Um, we are in the the green tech hub of London, sustainable workspace. Wow. Where are our new, where are new offices. Where, yeah, where is cool. that? Uh, it is just behind the Tate Modern, so near Borough right. Market. Yeah, very cool. I may have been there, but maybe not. That sounds like a great place to work. Lots of networking yeah. and yeah, that's a very cool kind of driving brands trying to make a big difference. Yeah, I can imagine. Um, I bet that's yeah, just a great place to hang out and see what other people are doing. Um, yeah. As I was reading about. Uh, Delphus Eco and, and the work you're doing, I was really shocked to find out this um, study that was published that you have listed, which is that people who've worked as cleaners or have done household cleaning for 20 years, it sounds like it's kind of professionally, like this is something they do all the time, that um, they have reduced lung fun function that's equivalent to 20, year, to tw 20 cigarettes a day for that same time period. That's, I mean, that's awful. Um, is that is that because of the uh, so you mentioned something about VOCs or volatile organic compound compounds? Is that what that's from? Yeah, um, it, it it's it is it's horrendous. Um, it's the effectively the fumes that right. are in cleaning products, um, and the the study is from Bergen University, and they they ran it over twenty years. Um, so it's 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 a you know, a very you know, academically heavy report mm -hmm. but the the reality is that you don't need to have you know fumes vocs in uh in cleaning products to to do the cleaning job um and it's it's not surprising that the likes of bleach is being banned across europe because it is you know very heavily you know, you, you, you know, if you clean with bleach uh the respiratory damage that it causes is is you know is dramatic um so i you know i suspect in america the if it was you know had any more profile the uh there'd be a class action suit against people making yeah, right, right. making you know highly you know, high voc cleaning products uh, just like there is for the smoking fraternity yeah wow i had no idea so yeah, I'm just, as you were saying that, I'm just thinking about the times. It's very rare, but I have cleaned with bleach or someone in the house has cleaned with bleach. And I just think that's not a pleasant smell. So there's a reason for it because it's really bad for yeah, you. Yeah, it's, it's, bad, it's bad for you and it's, it's bad for the environment. Um, and the irony about, about scents and cleaning products is that they don't actually add any value to the cleaning process. They just, you know, it's, it's designed to, to, make you think that the surface is clean versus the surface being clean. Mm -hmm. So um, not only is it bad for you, but it, it's masking actually what is being done. Interesting. So um, you said scents, like when you spray something, it smells like lemon. It, yeah. So I think the that's bad a, for you as well. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I think there's another, there's a, there's a UK study which says that indoor air quality is six or eight times more polluted than outdoor air quality because we have all these perfumes going off in our houses and in our cars and all that kind of stuff. And they're just not good for you. Oh man. Good thing yeah. I got this little plant behind me. I'm going to need to yeah. ask many more based on that. We need a few more plants. <laughs> yeah. We all need more plants. Yeah. Wow. So if it's bad for us um, inhaling it, it, it must be really bad for the environment as well at some point. Um, I guess the, the part that I'm not 100% clear, clear on is, um, if I'm just spraying stuff on the counter, is that what's bad for the environment? Or is it going to be like if I'm pouring cleaning, like toilet cleaner, or is it all of it? Well, there's a, there's a bunch of different things in that. So the, the important piece is the biodegradation. So half, you, you want something that does a job and then gets out of the environment. So it gets mm -hmm. out of your environment and it gets out of kind of nature's environment. So you want to, you want something that can, that can you, know, you spray on a surface, it doesn't 
chuck off a huge amount of kind of gas and you right. you know you breathe it in that's that's clearly bad for you and then also how fast does it biodegrade and if it biodegrades quickly then that's great but if it doesn't biodegrade quickly then that's obviously bad and that obviously has a knock on and a, and a lasting impact on the environment so I mean, there's a classic uh, where we you know we supply you know thousands of restaurants and thousands of 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 kind of environments and we teach in one of the you know, one of the we teach people how to use cleaning products clearly mm -hmm. and obviously and there is one of them where we say if you take bleach and you take a kind of a, a gif or a sif or something like that and you mix the two it creates mustard gas and there are loads of examples of cleaners who have passed out near death get dragged off to hospital um and nobody can work out what it is that they've done and then they admit that they've taken bleach and they've taken their bath cleaner or their cream cleaner and they've mixed the two together in a small environment it causes mustard gas and they they have a dreadful time so that this is, is this is real this is real. that's terrible i actually yeah. was reading um an article is like a local newspaper um online that said that there was a couple that was cleaning the bathtub or the toilet or something and they had to evacuate because there i don't know if there was a it doesn't sound like there was a fire but it sounded like it was very toxic and the, and yeah, it could have the dog was coughing exactly they would have used bleach in the loo and they would have used cream cleaner in the in the, in the loo as well or in the sink and yeah. both of the gases came together and so you know the, the the thing is that you you don't need to have you can make cleaning products without having those noxious gases yeah um and that's what you and, do and that's exactly what we do that's what we do so i mean it's not, it's not easy but uh it, it's doable right and so uh, so your products are plant-based um and they're biodegradable yeah. so that's obviously very different than the bleach and the big name brands most of them i imagine that are in stores um so plant-based to me makes me think like kind of very basic almost but you're saying it's not easy so it's not just like squeezing some lemon and water there is obviously more to it yeah i mean I, again I, my 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 you know health warning to everybody is that i'm not a i'm not a biologist and or a, and or a chemist but neither I've am i spent the last 10 years um talking to chemists and playing with formulations and you know my personality is that you know if not me then who Right. You know, my belief is we can do this and we can find a better way um and it's the, the the way it works is if you take sugar cane or a sugar beet or you take a sugary root and you you boil down or you ferment the likes of a, a um, sugar beet it splits in two and on the one hand you get lactic acid and the other other side you get bioethanol so bioethanol you can use to fly jets lactic acid as a disinfectant so okay. both of these things are super potent and wow. super powerful doing that and that process is a new process so the you know this industry hasn't been disrupted in 100 years hmm. you know before this they were you know it, it kind of the soap industry came from whaling you know it, right. it the, the disruption just hasn't happened is it possible yes is it difficult yes but you can you know the 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 carbon impact of taking rapeseed or sugarcane which sequestrates carbon into the ground yeah. versus dredging for oil which is just a massive carbon emitter there's an inverse correlation in carbon by using you know plant-based ingredients one mm -hmm. two they because they're plant-based the biodeg biodegradability is much much faster so there's so there's a, the as i talked about earlier the the clean is very strong and the biodegradability is higher so your actually your your environmental impact um is is very is is, is much better than dredging for oil um uh, so so yes yeah it's not just squeezing lemons um yeah lemon into a into a kettle does a job yeah um uh but there are, you you know there's you can get we've got um or organic citrus that we use uh, in all of our descaling products that 
do a, do a, a fantastic job. So the so the idea is that they are safe for the environment, and and I I was I saw that there's a lot of um, really positive reviews on your website about how well the products work, and you have a wide range of them. So, I mean, it's I guess maybe this is just the mentality of uh, we were talking about bleach. You know how it's hard for me to believe almost that cleaners can be safe for the environment and for the people while cleaning so effectively. So is that why it's so difficult to, or why it's challenging rather to create such a, a good product is being able to kind of toe the line of having really effective products and at the same time, making sure that they remain safe for the environment. Um, I mean, well, there's a couple of things. I mean, one is it's just new technology. It's, mm. it's new chemistry. Um, and it's finding a, a finding a better way, and that's what's important. Is that we have to try really hard to find a better way. Uh, we've got a great example. We we supply uh, the Trafford Centre, and they clean five miles of brass every day. Five that, miles that, of brass. That, that that number just you know knocked me off my chair, and I was like, <laughs> the poor guy using you know the traditional brass cleaners, which I'm sure you've used huge solvents you know burn your eyes and this guy is doing it or this this team is doing this every day for five miles and i went to our chemist and went surely we can make a brass cleaner that is solvent free i said well we'll have a go backwards forwards backwards forwards backwards forwards they tried try it no it doesn't work do something else feedback with the team at the Trafford Center, eventually we have created a solvent-free brass cleaner, which they absolutely love. So is it is it applying some, you know, intelligence and rethinking how we do this? Yes, can we get to a great result? Yes, you can. Um, the, the problem with society is that the eco-cleaning products that you and I remember from 10 years ago, you know, they were you know, very ineffectual and everybody got the impression that oh this stuff doesn't work and it's much more expensive exactly. and very sadly that legacy still carries on today they go the stuff doesn't no eco-friendly product can possibly as good as be as good as the the nasties that you know singe my nose has or um uh, and, and they're much more expensive and the reality with us is you know for for a decade we have been you know, selling our products into the commercial cleaning world. So we've had to go up against the nastiest of the nasties and compete on provenance and effectiveness and on price because nobody in the industrial cleaning space cares about paying a, a, a premium for any, you know, for, for, for a better product. Yeah. It's got to work first and foremost. It's got to be price competitive. And then the kind of the eco piece comes third. So yeah. yeah, I would imagine for for a cleaning company that eco messaging isn't a priority, even for their clients. That I, I would, from my point of view, I would imagine that their clients just want the job to get done well. And um, that, that's that's changing incredibly rapidly. Oh, and I think it's brilliant. changing. It's changing for a, for a bunch of reasons. I think mm. the you know, the the awareness now is now everywhere that yes. you've got to fix this. Right. Um, you know, the government declaring a climate emergency, um, the SDGs now coming out and every major company going, we need to start thinking about how we fit, fit in with that. The emergence of B Corp and, mm -hmm. you know, their methodologies and their kind of principles coming through. So your, your, your big, your old school, big corporate, is now turning around going, well, we need to have a sustainability policy and within our sustainability policy, if we want to hire good staff, we need to, we need to talk about this stuff and we need to live and breathe it. And, you know, what can we do from a supply chain perspective to fix this? Mm -hmm. And we're a very simple answer. So we're a very simple tick box. Well, you can use you know, this nasty product to clean my school, or we can use this nice product to clean my school. Yeah. Which one would you like? Um, and, and if the price is the same, then it really should be a no-brainer, or if it's close enough, at least. Yeah, yeah, and and it's it's a you know when we're talking about cleaning products in in contracts, the, the again talking about inverse correlation, which which um, 
uh, I use a lot. Mm -hmm. the, the price of, of cleaning a building versus the environmental impact that that cleaning product has when you pour it down the drain is not comparable. It costs nothing to clean, uh, you know, desks and floors. It literally costs, you know, less than pennies. But when you then pour that soapy, you know, bucket down the drain, and that drain goes straight into the Thames, because it's probably not going through, it's not getting poured down a loo or a sink, which then goes into uh, into a water recycling facility or a waste recycling plant. I see. So that, you know, that you, those, you see people, you see people, you see the, you know, the street collectors, the, the sweepers just opening up their tanks and pouring all of the, you know, water and whatever down the drain that goes straight into the water course. So, yeah, it, it you know, honestly, I see people with, with great intentions pouring soap suds down the, the, into the street. Yeah. And that, that is going straight into the water course. Oh man. So um, that's the importance of biodegradability. Did I say that yeah. correctly? Yeah. It, it, yeah. It, it, yeah. The least possible impact on the environment. That, okay. That makes a lot of sense. So it's, <laughs> yeah. So you, you basically want it that by the time they pour it into the, down the drain, well, first of all, they pro hopefully they don't, but you can't control those things. So what you can control is what is in the bucket that they end up pouring. Um, yeah. so you just hope that by the time it reaches the Thames, it's, it's all pretty much gone. Well, that, that's why I, I, I go on about phosphates and phosphonates. Right. So, you know, and EDTA, as you, you asked earlier, you know, we don't have any phosphates in any of our products. Why? Because phosphates do not, so what should happen is that, you know, any waste water from the cleaning process it, it, whether you're domestic or whether you are commercial should go down a, a, a sink hole or down, you know, down a, a shower or into a loo because that goes through a waste uh, uh, purification plant facility somewhere. Makes sense. So it should, the, it should get cleared out in that, in that environment. Mm. Phosphates don't. So phosphates do not get taken out in the waste and waste um, wastewater recycling facilities, they go and then what happens is that that water then just gets pumped into the water course. So that'll go into a river, or it will go into a river, and, and then wherever that goes into the sea. So when you see algae blooms, you know, mostly in Florida, um, but they happen you know all over the UK, it's basically phosphates getting pumped into the water course, kills fish, kills all sorts of things, you know, nasty. Uh, none of our stuff has any phosphate. So that's really important. And it's, it's, you know, I think we were one of the first people to ban phosphates across our range and we've never made any products with phosphate. So going back to the point about that person pouring the soapy water, soap suds down the, the drain in the street, which goes straight into the river. You want the products to be as kind to the environment as possible. So yeah. phosphate free, EDTA free, um, and to be able to biodegrade as fast as possible. So no chlorine bleaches because chlorine bleach, it doesn't, you know, it, does a, it does a job when it cleans in initially, but what chlorine does is chlorine being a, a deoxidant, deoxygenates water. So it takes the oxygen out of the water. Right. Therefore kills what's in living in the water and it doesn't biodegrade particularly quickly. So it continues to deoxygenate water as it goes down through the water course and continues to kill as it goes through the water course. So, you know, that's why we should bla ban bleach instantly because that's wow. just shouldn't happen. Well, that's why the work you're doing is so important because if you can compete with bleach <laughs> and if you can yeah. do as well as bleach can do, then uh, for anyone who wants to protect the lovely animals that live near and, and in the water, that's a, a really easy way to do it. It's just stop using bleach and switch over to Delphis. Yeah. That's exactly. my, my pitch for the, for the day. <laughs> good, good, good call. Absolutely. You know, it, I, it makes a lot of sense. And I appreciate you explaining that because I, I didn't really understand where exactly the, um, where the products make such a negative impact. I mean, the, the standard way. So it's because it, it sounds like it in many ways it ultimately does end up in the waterway so if you're able to 
make it significantly less harmful than you're doing a, a whole lot of good. Um, yeah. What you mentioned B Corp, and I'm, I'm I'm just really curious: are is Delphi Seco a B Corp as well? Yeah. So that's um, I, I'm kind of familiar with B Corp. I've I've seen it sort of on the internet, and I've looked into it, but what exactly is it? B Corp's very cool. So that they are, um, their, their principles are, are you a, uh, a business? So you're a for-profit business, nice. but you have, but you have a strong social ethos mm. and a strong environmental ethos. So to become a B Corp, um, they've got a horrendous, uh, number of questions you have to go through. So they don't make it uh, easy. <laughs> they don't make it easy. And lots of people can't, can't get it. Um, That's good to know. But yeah, they're, they're, you know, the brands that are, are really striving to get B Corp have to, you have to write it into your articles of association that you have a strong environmental ethos and a strong social ethos and that you care about not only your employees, but the environment and everything else that goes around it. Um, and there are loads of checks and balances which they check off on you. So it's really important um, that I think all companies should strive to have that ethos mm -hmm. um, because you are, you, we're not a social enterprise. We're a for-profit business, but we think with a very strong social ethos and, and, yeah. and, and mentality. And I think that's critical for businesses going into the future. What I, what I love about that is it's specifically for profit companies and it just goes to show that you don't need to give up being you know being a business being interested in making a profit and doing and all simultaneously while doing good in the world whether it's for people or the planet and yeah. i think that that's so cool that they're really encouraging that and um and they don't make it easy so do, do you get checked up on yeah, yeah, nope. yeah. It's, it, 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 uh, it's every every two years you have to reapply, oh, and every wow. year you've got to write a, a big long dossier to say that you're still doing the right thing. Um, but I've, I've been to a number of conferences, and it's incredible how many how many big brands are very jealous about you know the companies that have B Corp, and and from an employability perspective, mm -hmm. you know the young the young generation are looking to work in companies that have that kind of thinking yep. so yeah you know, if you've got a b corp it's much easier to to attract great staff uh, and young talent um, and i think from a client perspective and a customer perspective it's kind of you know what you're doing in you know spreading the word mm -hmm. and you know showcasing you know, let's not say exemplars, but showcasing that things can be done and change is happening. Yeah. You know, they're doing the same thing at a, at, a, at a kind of a corporate level. Yeah, that's really cool. Do, and so do you put the B Corp uh, logo onto your products? Yeah. So people can see that? Yeah. You're, you're looking at your products. Do you want to show I us? Am. <laughs> I, I am looking, and I can't see the B Corp logo on these products. Um, we have the B Corp logo all over our website and all over our marketing collection. Let's... Um, on that why, note, on that. let's share the screen so we can uh, we can take a look at what people can look for. We do, and uh, we're doing lots with them. I'm I'm leading a group with B Corp of uh, like-minded businesses to to try and exhibit at COP26 in Glasgow. Oh, cool! Yeah. Um, so engaging with the government to make sure that other like-minded businesses like ours can mm -hmm. showcase that we are, you know, there are businesses that are, are, are you know, walking the walk, not just talking the talk. Yeah. Type thing. That is great. I think it's really important. I, I like what you said about um, big companies being jealous of your B Corp status. I'm just going to stop the screen share here because um, one of the questions I was, I had was if you're worried at all about these big companies that have massive, teams of scientists coming in and just going green overnight uh, there are some really big names but it, well my, my instinct based on what you're saying is that it would be pretty tough for them to do that and get all of the certification um so it's, it's a good question i as the we can only guess but my 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 hope is mm -hmm. that if you are a consumer and you know you know you know, said FMCG firm mm -hmm. is making nasty products and all of a sudden comes out with, oh, 
And by the way, we've got this little eco product on the side. I think the consumers are wising up to the fact that, well, 80% of your revenue is made from nasty stuff that you know is tested on animals. And when it goes down the drain, it kills dolphins. And only you know 5% or 1% of your turnover comes from your eco range. Look at us, 100% of what we do is what we do. And it is all, you know, everything is around being as sustainable as possible. Mm-hmm. You know, I've been asked by customers to create all sorts of products and I refuse to carry anything that doesn't have a deeply thought through um, you know, environmental ethos. It's just, we, and so that's one. The second thing is, you know, another good example is our, our laundry powder. To create a laundry powder that is optical brightener free, that is um, VOC free, uh, that is phosphate free, but actually cleans, you know, that's the key, isn't it? You know, <laughs> grass stains and, you know, people cut themselves and there's blood and stuff like that, which is really hard to clean. Yeah. You know, we won't list anything that doesn't actually work. So it took about six years of, you know, playing with wow. formulations to actually get to have all the eco, you know, credibility locked down and to be able to do the job. And we had we had it we've had this product tested. There was a there was a mum who who called up and said, "Do you have a, a laundry powder?" And I said, "Why?" She said, "Because I I clean the my kids' rugby team's rugby kit every weekend, and it's a nightmare." Mm, I imagine. And I said, "Try this." Um, and she came back and went, "It's the best thing she's ever used." So you know, we have we have a we've now launched a, a laundry laundry powder, um, which we sell to. It's 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 in an eight kg bag, so it's not really domestic. Yeah. So we sell it to you know hotels and people like that. But we're in the process of putting it into smaller pack size so that you know people at home can use it too. That's awesome. Are you, are you going to do a laundry liquid as well? So, so we're trying to get. We've got a softener which which again works in low temperature. Mm. Um, yeah. All of all of all of the above. Yeah. It's so again, amazing. optical brightener free, VOC free, you know, phosphate free, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So the things you have to think about when you're, because uh, you said it has to work in low temperature. I didn't even consider that. So you have yeah. to test all the different, all the different ways. Uh, well, but, the laundry thing, we, we even even cooler. Um, we're working with a with a company at the moment. I don't know if you know um, a company called Notpla. They make seaweed sachets. So in the okay. at the last the last London Marathon. They were handing out little yes. sachets of water. Yeah, not PLA. You, yeah, not PLA. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So they. You, you, so we're working with them. So because we're single-use plastic-free, we're looking at working with them to put the the laundry powder into a seaweed uh, wrapper. That makes sense. That's a great way to do it. Yeah, that's a very common way that people are doing it now, isn't it already? But it's but it's all plastic. Oh, I see. So so obviously the seaweed's not plastic yeah and it's edible isn't it yeah like you can just that's what they would do they would the runners would just eat the water yeah but uh, d- d- don't eat the laundry powder no <laughs> certainly not <laughs> it may be it may have fewer harmful yeah, you're, chemicals but you'll 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 be you'll be burping uh, uh bubbles for a while <laughs> well if that's the worst of it then uh yeah it could certainly be worse i guess you could do the same thing with um uh uh dishwasher using the same kind of tech because that's yeah. so we do, we're, doing, do we, we're in the process of working with them to for a um, we've got a dishwasher and, and rinse aid product that we have uh, eu eco label accreditation on um and that is but that's for a kind of commercial kitchens so we again tweaking that to be more domestically mm. suitable and we're going to work with with not to put them into their seaweed sachets. Awesome. That's really cool. Yeah. So um, speaking of packaging, um, I know you're very proud of your plastic uh, and the packaging that you use. Can you, um, w- why exactly are you, are you so proud of it? Um, oh, he, there he is grabbing a bottle. Yes. <laughs> um, so this, this, this bottle is made from 100% recycled single-use plastic so it's that, that's incredible on many many levels so one you know, with single-use plastic yeah 
So we are recycling post-use, single-use plastic. So, so what does post-use mean? Means you've it's gone through. You've used it. So, so I it's gone. Fork. Plastic uh, fork. Yeah, correct. So, the, so in the industry there is recycled plastic, but it's virgin plastic. So I in a big production facility, there are offcuts. You get those, you put them back in, and you push them through the process, and that's recycled but it's still virgin plastic, right? That's totally pointless. This is all about how do we divert millions and millions of tons of plastic from going into the ocean? One, how, so how do we fix, fix the environment from that perspective? How do we reduce carbon? Hmm. This has got a 70% reduction in carbon by using uh, recycled plastic. How do we change the way people behave with just waste material and not just throw it away, but go, actually, somebody wants to buy this. So my my, the, my current throwaway plastic, which is, you know, it gets used for milliseconds yeah. and lasts for 450 years, it's worthless. Well, we now are saying, well, we'll buy it. And we are buying used plastic, repurposing it and re-blowing it we've you know it's taken this has taken six or seven years it's been an unbelievably tough journey but we've got for the first time well, we i think we in the uk certainly we are the we're the only people that have a hundred percent of our products made from 100 percent recycled single-use plastic that's incredible uh, and, I, and i think we're the only people in the world who who do it um as well so, so where so do you get it from at the moment we use the, the two big waste collectors. Uh, Violi and Biffa pretty much have a 50% market share across the UK mm -hmm. collecting local authority waste. At the moment, we are using just milk bottles. So when your rubbish gets collected from outside your home, it'll go to a kind of a sorting environment and then they'll sort out cardboard, glass, you know, metal, wood, whatever else gets mm -hmm. picked up. And then in the plastic stream, they'll sort that out as well. And they'll go, okay, all of the um, PET plastic, which is traditionally your, your water bottles, and then your HDP plastic, which is your shampoo bottles, your milk bottles, et cetera, et cetera, all get streamed out. They get bailed up. And then you know, up until January last year, you know, January last year, they were shipped off to China. Um, right. You know, According to Hugh Fernley and his BBC uh, channel program, they're all now being shipped off to the Philippines. Um, we have said, we don't want that to happen. We want the bottles to be, UK bottles to be collected in the UK, processed in the UK, and then turned back into, into a, you know, a new, a new product. So this is, this is a, this is, you know, circular economy behavior in practice, we are taking, you know, milk bottles that are being used at home. We're bringing them back round, we're turning them into a cleaning bottle, and we're selling them back to people to use these products back in their home. The good news is, the reason they are the the natural color that they are, mm -hmm. is that this is the most recyclable color. So if it's green, it has to go into the green stream, and if it's blue, it goes into the blue stream, and only 9% of plastic is recycled. Yeah, so, that's know, crazy. 91% not being recycled at all. And I think Westminster Council, they they publicly state that 87% of all of their waste collected gets incinerated. So it makes no, it actually has, you know, everybody knows the little triangle on the bottom of the bottle. Oh, it's, you know, triangle number two, this is recyclable. It makes, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. If you live in Westminster, it's just gonna get burnt. So, you know, it, we've got to change that. You know, we've got to say, listen, Westminster, I will buy your plastic waste and I'm going to turn it around and I'm going to send it back to the residents of Westminster and the businesses of Westminster as a cleaning product. So, and so what so happens to the bottle once, so let's say I'm, I'm done using the bottle, what should I do with it? Well, you can, because I've kept it this color, right. it's the same color as the milk bottle. So the, it, it, milk right, bottles yeah. get stripped. They are the most recycled, oh, I most see. collected. So the reason we pick milk bottles and pick them state of the color is that so that is the one thing stuff. that it'll come back out. 
So you can, after this, chuck it straight into the waste system and it'll get pulled back out in the milk bottle stream and used again. So, so we'll then buy this bottle back. Makes sense. So when you say, we'll, we'll buy the material back. I gotcha. When you say chuck it into the waste stream, do you mean like actually sort it out into the recycling or it doesn't really matter if you know? Yes, put it into the recycling. Okay. Um, because all of that will, as I say, will go into, you know, it mm -hmm. should go into a, a sorting facility. So um, it, you yeah, know, it should. My fight and one of the things um, you know, we've been championing is we launched this, this logo last summer um, at Greta Thunberg's Climate Strike Day, which is called the Recycle Plastic Rating. And we are collaborating with a bunch of brands like us who use packaging. And we've said, this is the most important thing since the invention of plastic. This is not about whether your bottle is or your packaging is or is not recyclable. It's has it got recycled content in it? Yes. So we're completely turning the conversation on its head. Yeah. So right now we know that you know, 91 minimum of 91% of plastic is not recycled. If I, as a brand, I'm turning around and saying, Mr. Recycler, I need to buy recycled plastic. And if my customers are saying to me, I want to buy products packaged in recycled packaging yes then right you know, the power of the pound you know, pick a pick any brand pick any product when the customer's going i'm not going to be buying your product anymore i'm going to be buying somebody else's product because their packaging has got recycled content and therefore i know that i'm actually at point of purchase making a difference yeah because right now with the best will in the world if let's say you live in Westminster and you're segregating all your waste and every Thursday you put it all out and you know, you don't know, I'm not sure they tell everybody, but you segregate all your waste, it gets collected, all of it gets incinerated. Totally pointless in you incinerating, you segregating anything. So, and, and Westminster, I shouldn't pick on them because it's the same in every council. So by doing this, the councils will then go, okay, my residents are demanding that you know the stuff gets killed or they're, they're not demanding it they are demanding at the other end that the plastic is being re recycled right so rather than it doesn't it doesn't really matter what you do because your waste collector knows that there's value in the in what was rubbish they are going to actively sort it because they know somebody like me wants to buy it right so whereas before there was no value and actually let's just bury it we've now got people buying it and if you're and when the big fmcg groups come on board and when the big um, drinks companies come on board and say we have to have recycled content in our packaging the whole game will change and millions of tons of plastic will get diverted from going to landfill and the environment and will get reprocessed makes sense so this is what this is your website the plastics pledge.org i'm sharing my screen again is this these are the marks that you're referring to is it yeah. Um, where it says it basically it says uh, recycled plastic rating and there's different percentages so there I, i'm seeing 20 percent, 60 percent. i'm guessing your bottles have 100 percent um yeah and we've designed it we've designed the rating around what the government is planning to to introduce um so they're going to introduce a plastic tax and they've said that the minimum quantity of recycled content should be 30 percent um mm -hmm. Uh, so right Sorry. now, this, this doesn't exist. Um, they're not quite sure how, um, but you know, we came up with this logic, one for me to try and get other people to demand recycled content yeah. because the more people that demand it, um, the more capacity there'll be and the cheaper it'll be for, for everybody uh, to participate. And at the moment, you know, this plastic is much, much more expensive than buying virgin plastic, mm. but that it shouldn't be. It makes sense because, um, uh, I don't think anyone buys products based on how recyclable the plastic is. They just assume that plastic is recyclable, but if you're looking at a product and at least this is kind of the way I think about it. I, I'm just thinking about the way I think about it. Whereas if I knew and I saw in the product, oh, this is 100%. It's made from 100% recycled plastic. 
that if two products are the same on the shelf and one of them has this symbol, it says 100% made of 100% recycled plastic and the other one says 20% and the products are otherwise the same, I'll definitely go for the 100% recycled because that's an easy choice and I know I'm doing a lot of good. Um, so is that kind of the, the, the thinking behind it? Yeah, I, I think it's, I think, I think they're, you know, I think the consumer has lost trust and now mm. knows that your, you know, the packaging that they buy is not recyclable. A, it's not recyclable. It's not widely recyclable um, uh, and or doesn't get recycled. So even if you've, you've got um, uh, the Tetra Pak um, you know, juice, yeah. that 100% is recyclable, but it's only recyclable in the Nordic countries, it's right. not recyclable in the UK. Mm. So there isn't a there isn't a recycling facility for that here, which therefore means it doesn't get recycled. It gets incinerated or it gets buried. Yeah. So, you know, so there are a lot of people that turn around. That they load that. You know, my gripe is that there are twenty eight different marks that tell you whether your packaging is or is not recyclable. Mm -hmm. So this may be recyclable in the right environment if you live in the right local authority and you have a recycling facility somewhere nearby maybe the the, the reality variables. is the reality is that when you put your stuff in the in the waste you have no idea if it is being recycled or isn't being recycled and we know that it isn't being recycled yeah. i mean there's it's just well documented it's not being recycled here by picking this product up you go this has been recycled and it is recyclable clearly because it's been recycled. It, makes sense. it goes back around. So I'm not picking something on the off chance that it might be recyclable. I'm picking something that has been recycled. So by buying this, saying, yeah. the conscious decision is that I have actively helped divert plastic from the environment. Hmm. That's so, awesome. So, so the consumer goes by buying this, by buying products that have that rating, I am actively participating in helping the recycling process. That's amazing. So how many, how, how is this, um, how's the plastics pledge going? How is the, the mark working? I, so, I mean, is it, are people- It's been, a, it's board? unbelievable. Yeah, we've got, we've got a, we've got a working group. We've got a bunch of people that have signed up already. Amazing. Um, we've got a working group with, you know, literally the, glo the, the world's biggest brands on mm -hmm. Earth Day. Um, where we are finalizing what I want them to do. So we've kind of created the methodology. I want them from different walks of brands to agree that there is a single principle. And then the idea is with that working group, we're gonna to go to the government and we're gonna say, here is a mark that you need to get behind so that there's one mark. Uh, there isn't 20 or 30 different marks. There needs right. to be one mark that everybody gets behind. But everybody yeah. that we've spoken to, it, there are a bunch of guys that have already signed up um, and you know, are, are, are doing it. So that's so it's, awesome. it's been it's been incredible. Yeah, yeah. it's been really good. Well. I'm really glad to hear that. I remember um, I, I went to a sustainable packaging conference uh, here in London and um, a small group. There was probably like 30 or 40 of us there. And one of the biggest issues that, that these packaging uh, professionals were talking about is the number of marks and labels and little codes and symbols and all of them mean something kind of different, but they're sort of the same. And it's so confusing to the, I mean, it's confusing to them because <laughs> there's just so many of them, but as a consumer, it's mind boggling and you just, you just ignore it. You can't make a decision based on that. Yeah, exactly. So th th that's, that's the whole point. It's totally confusing. There's no trust. Yeah. And the whole point of this is that there's one mark. It's super easy to identify. Yeah. It sits across all the brands. Um, you know, what I must say and should say is that yes, Delft Seco came up with the initiative. The mark has been transferred into a social enterprise. Mm -hmm. So it now sits plastics pledge is a, is, it sits in the social enterprise, the revenue that is generated from the mark and the, the administration of the mark. Any any profits there will go into educating. It's it's educating around sustainability. Oh right, okay. So it's sustainability projects 
could be anywhere. It could be anywhere in the world. It could be, but it's it's making sure that we are putting money into educating people around how to be more sustainable. That's really cool. Um, one thing I really want to ask, which is completely off topic, um, and I'm just remembering since we're talking about marks, is that you have on your products you have royal warrants. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna have to share the screen again. I keep going in and out. Um, they're, they're behind me. Are they? Oh, there, there yeah. you go. Oh, wow, cool. Oh, yeah. yes. So what, what is it? What is a royal warrant? Yes. Um, a royal warrant is, is something that is granted to you by one of the royal families. So there, at the moment, there are only three that you can possibly apply for, um, Her Majesty the Queen, uh, the Duke of Edinburgh, and the Prince of Wales. And you have to supply your products and or services to one of those households for a minimum of five years before they will consider um, uh, offering you the ability or the right to use their coat of arms on your product. So it's a, it's a, it's a huge honor. Um, it's, a, it's a massive um, stamp of provenance. They don't give them out lightly. They, it's a, in the UK, it's a, um, a badge of excellence. So wow. you, have to, you have to offer great service and your product has to work. Otherwise, they wouldn't use it. That is um, so cool. So how yeah, does it, so, how do they, um, did they just give, call you up one day? Because you, you have two of them, first of all. So you have the Queen and then Prince Charles? Prince of Wales, yeah. The Prince of Wales, we yeah. Have, we have both. Um, Yes, well, I, I, when, when I gave up my overpaid banking job uh, with a belief that I needed to do something more constructive with my life, um, why cleaning products is a good question. Uh, Money Week wrote an article about me saying banker to bog cleaner, uh, <laughs> which, was, which I thought was hugely amusing. And sure. <laughs> the, the logic around cleaning products is they are used globally. Mm -hmm. And they have a global impact. Every single day, millions and millions and millions of liters of cleaning products go down the drain. So if I can create a range of cleaning products that are better for the environment, my impact will be massive. Yeah. So it is all about scale. We need mm -hmm. to scale change and help the environment. Um, so of the, the different things I looked at, my logic was, how can I have the biggest possible impact? Um, and the cleaning products is that, in my view, will have that impact. Um, clearly, the Prince of Wales has been the most incredible yeah, champion around sustainability and the, the, the you know, lifestyle choices for you know, over 30 years. Mm -hmm. um, and I was you know, just very lucky to, to ask the right people uh, who I could possibly talk to within the Prince of Wales' um, household to say, you know, please try my products. I believe we have the greenest products in the UK. You're clearly one of the, the most environmentally conscious people in the world. Um, uh, tell me what you think. Um, so did and, you start with Prince Charles and then move to the Queen? Um, yeah, so the, the Prince of Wales uh, gave us his his warrant in 2014, and the Queen in 2016. Wow. So, and do they? How did you get the warrant? I mean, was it a surprise? It just arrived in the post, or um, you you knew it was on its way? Well, you you have to you have to apply, but you can only apply after you've been supplying oh, it for five years. Got it. So there's there's a there is a there is a process, um, yeah. and and loads of people apply. Uh, every year, um, but they're very, very, very particular about who who they value to 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 offer their their coat of arms to. Um, and as I say, it's it's a it's a it's a it's a privilege uh, and an honour um, and, a, and a, a, a treat to 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 supply those households. Um, well, I I know we're um, approaching our time here, so um, I'd love to know um, first of all what's next because I know on your website you said something about refillables. So is that um, the direction that you're focusing on, kind of even less waste and kind of removing the um, 
that whole thing about plastic going into the waste stream at all and yeah i mean there's a the our, our kind of b2b customer base our commercial customer base we we we, we strongly um advocate and reject them buying throwaway trigger bottles or single use packaging mm -hmm. so we sell you know super concentrated products that they use to dispense from and you get you know you know 100 uses or 200 uses out of a single five liter bottle right um i think in the domestic world that has to come to so the 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 notion of you know the the learnings we have from you know the the decade of supplying you know big industrial uh corporates can tr you know, transition into into the home where you have super concentrated products and you refill at home um and 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 that is you know, we're talking to a number of supermarket chains to say how can we work with you on on that concept and we we're working with packaging designers to come up with little little measuring systems that we can do that too um so you know the next step for us is 100 percent to to introduce some of the the commercial learnings we've got into the home uh, and and make it and and cut you know cut domestic carbon yeah. so they don't need to buy a single bottle and throw it away mm -hmm. they can buy a bottle they can keep it and they can refill it yeah um, and i'm seeing the re the refill stations coming up uh at different stores um so i yeah. there's i think people are interested and motivated yeah they're there and the refill shops are, are a new anom anomaly i think they kind of started last year beginning of last year and that and they're taking you off like yeah. mad, which is which is fantastic That's so awesome. the kind of the plastic free type stores where you refill everything um is 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 fantastic and yeah. lots of people are asking if they can buy our stuff and they can obviously we've got we've got the industrial size quantities which we can send send to them so it's quite easy that's really cool. And um, one thing I, I always like to ask, because um, I'm just so curious, is what do you do, aside from all the amazing work that you're doing uh, at work, what, what do you do at home to be environmentally friendly? Something that maybe I can, I can use in my daily life. Um, I, I, I get asked to talk a lot. And you know, the, that question comes up. And the most important thing is, you know, the power, I, I, I go back to you, there's only one thing that we we control and that's that's you know what we decide to buy mm -hmm. um uh we we have the power to to move the needle ourselves and it's what are we buying uh across the board from you know cleaning products in your home to you know not buying you know air fresheners that detract from the environment and detract from you to you know conscious food to you know stuff that's packaged properly to whatever and i think mm -hmm. it's it's critical that every single one of us considers our purchasing habits and where possible just think about them and go actually do you know what do i need this or don't i need this and that and then they have a massive ripple effect yeah um so so it's i think it's vital that we all live within our means and try and be more conscious with our in our consumption yeah um and it, yeah it breaks my heart every day when you you know go home and you see people just throwing litter you know out of the window or yeah. dropping something on the street you just go how is that how you know, difficult is really it to gotta, throw away <laughs> yeah and i think what you're doing is, is is super important because it's 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 critical that what we don't do enough of and i and I, I i go on about this in my in my previous world i knew all of my competitors in all of the banks that worked in what i did and all of the lawyers knew all of their competitors and all of the accountants knew all of their competitors and in the in the kind of the the big in industries today it's incredibly well networked mm -hmm. so that when they want to make a change they make five phone calls and you know they can make make scale change in the emerging industries which is the, the kind of the green tech world we don't know each other enough there isn't enough showcasing of oh these guys are doing this well and these guys are doing this well hmm. and therefore us coming together knowing who is who and then networking together so we can we can learn from each other and they can be scale change yeah so the, the my, my my big push to to you know people in the media is to go we absolutely need to be showcasing where 
change is happening mm -hmm. and it's not just about talking about it it's actually people that are doing it yeah um and then other people to follow suit um and to learn from it and and, and we need to share not, not necessarily all ip but if anybody wants to talk to me about plastic and how we did this and how they can do the rating and how they can you know reduce carbon we all need to be sharing best practice to yeah, make a big difference. I think we're we're all in it together. So this isn't the time to keep trade secrets too closely to the chest. I mean, yeah, you probably don't want to completely ruin your business, but uh, it sounds like giving people some advice and kind of sh showing them the direction to move in uh, can really make a big difference for yeah. for everyone, really. Yeah, and we we asked, I mean, for twenty twenty. It's the year of networking for you know sustainable mm. sustainable businesses. We, yeah. we absolutely need to be talking to each other about what we're doing well and how we can move faster. Yeah, excellent. Well, on that note, Mark, thank you so much for your time. This was a really fantastic conversation. Love all the work you're doing. Thanks for showing the uh, the marks, the royal warrants on on your wall there, and um, looking forward to seeing what you come up with next, as well as your as well as your um, uh, new website. I'm sure it's going to look brilliant. Really cool. uh, if you know, if, if the next, I desperately want to go sell the products in America and help America become a little bit more sustainable. So, okay. if you know anybody in America, send them my way. Sounds great. Certainly will do. Cool. Well, thanks so much, Mark. Take thanks. Care. Okay. Cheers. Mark. Thank you so much for listening to this episode. Hope you enjoyed it. If you want to learn more about the work uh, that Delphus Eco is doing and, and take a look at their website, you can find them at delphiseco.com and that's spelled D-E-L-P-H-I-S.com. Uh, also that work that Paul was talking about in terms of the plastic pledge and that plastic mark that they're putting about recycling, you can go take a look at that campaign. It's plasticpledge.com. Org, uh, .org. Uh, if you want to follow them on social, then it's at Delphis Eco, and that's for both Instagram and Twitter. If you enjoyed the episode, please subscribe so you can be the first to know about new episodes and give us a five-star rating. It really helps and it's very appreciated and any feedback is welcome. Thank you so much.